What's up YouTube, I'm Guy. Today on the channel we are talking Rolex Submariner homage watches. Today on the channel I have six homage watches, some of the most popular Rolex Submariner homage watches, and getting this collection of watches together was no small feat. So big thanks to everyone that helped me out in getting these watches here. Hopefully you'll enjoy this comparison of all of these watches, and maybe if you're not sure about which homage watch you should add to your collection, if you happen to be looking for one, uh, yeah, maybe this will help you out. So here it is guys, six Rolex Submariner homage watches from left to right in escalating order of price. We have the Invicta Pro Diver 8926. We have the Tissell Marine Diver. We have the Steinhardt Ocean 139. We have the Squale 1545 Original. We have the Devosa Ternos Professional TT. And finally, we have the Junot Ocean Rover. All of these watches are, of course, homages to this watch right here, the Rolex Submariner. I wanted to do a video that was sort of the definitive homage video for Rolex Submariner, and it took a lot of effort to get this together. I had to pull many strings in order to get all of these watches here, so let me take a moment to send out a big thanks to everybody that got involved with loaning me watches so that I could do this video. I'm not going to name anybody by name in case they want to keep their identities private, but let me send each and every one of the people involved in loaning me these watches a big thank you. Both the Invicta and the Tissell on the left here were loaned to me by the same viewer. Thank you, buddy. I really appreciate it. The Steinhardt loaned to me by another viewer. Big thank you to you, sir. I really appreciate the help. The Squale 1545, that was a hard one to find. I really had to go high and low looking for somebody to come through on this watch, and I did find someone. Thank you, buddy. I really appreciate you loaning me this Squale. Now, the Devosa, the Ternos Pro TT, that is supplied to me on loan from Devosa themselves. I told them what I was doing. I said, hey, I'm doing a Submariner homage video. Would you like to have one of your Ternos watches included? They said, yes. They sent this watch over. I will be returning it. Big thanks to Devosa for loaning me this watch in. This really kind of shows that they stand behind their product. They're proud of what they do. They knew I was gonna be comparing this to all the other popular divers on the market, and they still sent it over. So a big thanks to them for loaning me this watch. Finally, the Genot Ocean Rover. This is my watch. I've reviewed this Genot and another one in the past. They were given to me by Genot, and uh, yeah, they're part of my collection. So that watch was mine, but provided to me for previous reviews by Genot. Big thanks to them for giving me those watches. Uh, I really like them, and I've been happy to have them in my collection. So we have watches here ranging from around $50 all the way on the low end, all the way up to $1,500 on the high end, and a lot of stuff in between. Now, I know there's certainly going to be watches that I don't have here. People are going to say, why aren't you comparing it with this or that or the other? I did my best, guys. Getting all six of these watches here was... Not a nightmare, I don't want to say it was a nightmare, but it was a lot of work and a lot of people had to come together. So this Invicta Pro Diver, it's a watch that I've reviewed in the past, and I actually like it quite a bit for the price. This watch can be gotten when it's on sale for as low as $50. Normal price ranges from $75 to $90. At that price point, you're getting a really very decent watch. Is it, you know, high-end? Is it packed full of high-end features? No, it's not. But overall, I do like this watch. I think that you can do a heck of a lot worse and spend more money. There are things about it that I don't like, however. We're going to talk about real basic specs on this watch and some of my pluses and minuses, my pros and cons. Some quick basic specs on the overall dimensions. 40 millimeters in case diameter, 20 millimeter lugs, a thickness that comes in at roughly 14 millimeters and an overall lug to lug width from one extremity of the case to the other from tip to tip of 47 and one half millimeters. This runs the Seiko NH35 movement. It does have hand winding and hacking. It is of course automatic. We do have 200 meters of water resist with this watch. Now, like I said, I do like it because it's a good value. It's, you know, a relatively attractive watch, but some of the things that I don't like about it, 
Number one, the engraving on the side of the case. I said as much in the original review. I just, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really care for giant engravings on the side of the case. And that applies to the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms, which I've reviewed in the past as well. I don't like, I don't like that aesthetically. Polished center links on the bracelet. It's a decent enough bracelet with uh, simple friction pins holding it together and a very basic clasp, fold over safety latch, but otherwise, you know, just a friction lock clasp the you know lightweight uh stamped swing arm material stamped clasp it's for the for the price though it's you know a lot better than some other watches that i've seen on the market now i would say that i do dislike the polished center links while the bracelet itself is decent quality they got you know no major complaints with it yeah polished center links not my favorite on a sports watch like this i'd probably prefer if they were just brushed but you know whatever small cosmetic thing you could actually brush these out yourself if you wanted to probably the big negative for me is uh the movement i'm just not a huge fan of these seiko movements anymore i've had lots of problems with them in terms of reliability accuracy and precision i've talked about that a lot in other videos i'm not going to go into it a lot here suffice to say i've had dozens upon dozens of watches that use these seiko movements and i've had issues with many of them so that's something that uh you know i'm not overly crazy about the other thing is the overall mm, longevity uh the, the quality questionable. And the reason I say that is because when I reviewed this watch, I gave it to a friend when I was done. He's a bartender. He wore this watch every day for the better part of a year, and eventually the watch died on him. His hand was going in and out of the sink, washing glasses at the bar, and yeah, eventually the water resistance failed. It took about a year, or just over a year. But I guess, you know, anecdotally, that it's not uh, that's not great it is a sample size of one though and that's just my experience or at least my friend's experience with the watch that I gave him but it doesn't instill a ton of confidence that said at say $50 if I had to replace this watch with a brand new one once a year not really a big deal I could almost consider a $50 watch disposable anyway and if I got a year out of it I'm not gonna be too disappointed Next, we're going to take a look at the Tissel, 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 I don't know exactly how you pronounce that now, uh, Marine Diver Watch. This watch is wildly popular. I have never had one in my hands until just recently when uh, a viewer loaned it to me for this video, uh, but I've heard nothing but good things about it for the better part of a couple of years. And I got to tell you, of all six of the watches that I have here, this is the one that disappointed me the most. First, basic specs and price and whatnot, $275. Not a bad price for a decent quality Rolex Submariner homage watches, considering we have some that go up to over, um, you know, $1,500 almost. This is a pretty good price. But there's a lot of things that I don't like about it. Let me tell you the good first, though. Uh, overall dimensions on this watch comes in at a very good size, 40 millimeters in case diameter, 20 millimeter lugs, an overall thickness of about 13, and lug to lug from one tip to the other, or the watch's wingspan, 47 millimeters. This runs the Miyota uh, 90 S5, I believe, movement. I'm not super familiar with Miyota movements, to be perfectly honest. I don't have much to say about it, good or bad, in terms of the movement in general. But I have put this specific watch on my time grapher, and it ran very poorly. Lots of uh, uh, beat errors, uh, kind of uh, swingy, not super consistent in terms of the rate and accuracy. Could just be a fluke, could be, you know, uh, a, a problem with just this and not indicative of the watches as a whole. I'm sure it's probably not, but that was a bit of a disappointment. Uh, beyond this example, though, yeah, I don't have a lot of experience with Miyota, so I can't go too far and speculate on that much more. Uh, this does have sapphire crystal with uh, AR coating. We do have a ceramic bezel. The action on the bezel... Um, it's actually pretty good. It's not, a lot of the other ones are, are fairly stiff and this one is not stiff, but it's very, uh, ratchety or clackety. Uh, it doesn't feel like super high quality refined, uh, but it's certainly serviceable. The edge of the bezel, the, um, texture, not excellent. It's not uh, super aggressive. It doesn't feel like you get a great grip or traction on it, but it's, uh, you know, not, it's not bad either. Just when I compare it to some of the more expensive ones, it's not quite there. 
The bezel insert is ceramic and it's nicely done. Uh, we have a date magnifier and the magnification level is, is quite good. The other thing that I kind of was a letdown on this watch is the bracelet. First of all, the end links, they're not very well defined. They look just kind of like a, like a forge, forging, you know, they're not really nicely machined like some of the more expensive ones. The uh, fit of the end link into the case, uh, and it's not, it's not beautiful, it's not perfect, it's not flawless, but the bigger problem is the clasp. On the surface you would think, oh, this is a really nice clasp. It has a glide lock built into it. It has the uh, uh, pivoting hinged lockup, uh, a, a, a big robust high quality swing arm. But once you get into the glide lock, it is, I mean, really stiff. Once you're adjusting it, it's really kind of loose and floppy, and then locking it back into place, it is not good. Not good at all. I mean, you can see I'm struggling with it here on camera. I'm probably not even going to bother, because you really got to futz with it to get it to lock back into place. The owner of this watch told me that the first one he got, it just kind of snapped closed and then just popped open on its own. It was very bad. He had to get to sell to send him a replacement for this piece of the glide lock. So yeah, overall, not super impressed with this bracelet. Now, a lot of people have said in my Jeannot Ocean Rover review where I pointed out that they had the glide lock system. They said, oh, well, well the, the Tissell Marine Diver has the same exact bracelet and clasp and it's a fraction of the price. This is not the same exact clasp that you find on the uh, Jeannot. We'll look at that more closely in a few minutes. Next up, we're gonna take a look at the Steinhardt. This is sort of the watch collector's community sweetheart or darling. The Steinhardt Ocean One gets a ton of love from the watch community. It is a nice watch. This particular model is the 39 millimeter, comes in at about $400 US. And yeah, overall, not much to really, really love about it, not much to really, really hate about it. It's a very kind of average watch, and it falls right in the middle of the price points of these watches, so you would sort of expect that. People are probably going to complain that I'm going to describe this as sort of an average watch, but compared to the higher-end watches, it's not nearly as good. Compared to the, some of the more affordable, it's much, much better. Overall size, scale, dimensions of this watch, 39 millimeters in diameter, 20 millimeter lug width, Thickness of 13 millimeters and a lug to lug from one extremity of the case to the other of uh, 47 millimeters. This uses the ETA 2824 2, which I love. I'm super happy with that. It's the Elabor grade, according to their website. Sapphire crystal with AR coating, though the AR coating is not outstanding, as you can see all of the glare I'm picking up here. Um, ceramic bezel insert. The bezel itself, the action, kind of on the stiff side compared to, you know, the, the Tissell we just looked at. Uh, the edge texture of the bezel, a little bit more aggressive, a little bit better, but still not quite as defined or refined, not as aggressive as I like. Uh, that said, overall, the bezel's pretty darn good. That ceramic insert, the, the, the graduations, the markers on the ceramic, just sort of disappear in low light. I don't know if it's showing on camera, they just kind of, you can hardly read them depending on the different lighting conditions. Uh, a little bit of a problem that I've noted with this one as compared to some of the other watches that we're taking a look at today. A big thing that I hate about Steinhardt, the Cyclops magnifier, does not magnify the date nearly enough. It's It makes me wonder why they bothered putting it on there. All of the other watches, Cyclops magnifiers, the watches that have them, they, they have great levels of magnification. This one, Somewhat of a letdown. All of these watches have screwed on crowns. This one is no exception. Hand winding the movement, being an ETA 2824, it is, you know, great as you would expect. The bracelet on this watch is good, not outstanding, not bad at all by any means. The end links are solid end links and they're pivoting end links. I think this is the only one with the pivoting end link system. All the rest have the full solid extended T-shaped end links. I like it. I like that it's a little bit different. It's a little bit more like a uh, old style Submariner. The case though is very much the least like a Submariner Rolex Oyster case. All of the other uh, cases, watches, cases, more resemble an Oyster case. This is very much its own style of case. That may be a good thing, that may be a bad thing, it depends on what you're going for. Um, I don't dislike 
the look or the style of this case, but considering it's a Submariner homage, it doesn't really look like an oyster case. The rest of the bracelet is okay. I would expect that once we start getting to this price point, we might have a better clasp. This does just have a fold over safety latch and it is otherwise friction locked. A good swing arm, plenty of micro adjust holes, but once we start getting up here, I kind of would like something a little bit better. Uh, unfortunately for a lot of the watches, even as we escalate up in price, we still get this basic same kind of clasp. And frankly, this clasp is not much better than the clasp that we find on the 50 to $75 Invicta watch. A little bit better. The swing arm maybe is a little bit more high quality. The material of the clasp itself may be a little bit more high quality, but it is not a significant upgrade from even that very simple, inexpensive entry level watch. Um, and almost all of these watches exhibit that same thing with the uh, exception of the um, to sell, <laughs> I'm trying to remember all the names of all these watches. The to sell, it does have that glide lock clasp, but it's not done very well. And the Genoa Ocean Rover also has a glide lock style clasp, which is in fact done very well. Next up is the Squale 1545. This is sort of the, the surprise watch for me. I really like it a lot. Um, I liked the 1521, which I reviewed a while ago, but that's not a sub homage at all. This watch, uh, yeah, it did kind of surprise me. I was not expecting as much out of it for the price. The Squally 1545 comes in at a price point of 579 US dollars. Overall, yeah, I'm actually really uh, pretty impressed with this watch at this price point, in fact. Basic specs before we get into all of the good, the, good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, 40 millimeter in case diameter, 20 millimeter lugs, an overall thickness 13.5, and a lug to lug of um, 48 from tip to tip. It does present a little bit bigger. Well, the dimensions on all of these watches, with the exception of the Devosa, which we'll talk about next, are basically the same within a millimeter in any direction. But this one just kind of presents a little bit bigger to me. I don't exactly know why. Um, yeah, not a huge problem. It's not like it seems really big. Just, just next to all of the other watches, it does feel a little bit bigger. The first thing that really impresses me about this watch is the case. It is very much... The first watch that we see escalating up in price where the case is really nicely done, the, the edges are all very crisp and well-defined. It has better than average finishing on the case. Yeah, they, they, this is the first one that we've looked at so far that really gets the case right and it looks very much like a Rolex Oyster case. Um, the crown seems a little bit big and the uh, crown guard's a little bit small, but overall, yeah, it's it's very nicely done. I really like the case, and again, as we started escalating up the price tiers, this is the first one that really does have that oyster case look and feel to it. Rest of the uh, specs about this watch, ETA 2824-2 movement, which I love, sapphire crystal, aluminum bezel insert. This is obviously sort of a mill sub style uh, homage watch. We got the sword hands, uh, sort of a vintage loom on the dial. So that this is an aluminum insert would be fitting for the type of watch that it's homaging. I don't have an, a problem with that. The bezel action is snug, very, very snug. That's sort of a letdown. Uh, it works good. You're certainly able to manipulate it or operate it. It is just a little bit tighter than I would like. Uh, the, the, the texturing on the edges getting better as we go up at each price point. Uh, the bracelet, the end links are not really, really nicely done. They're decent, they're okay, but not nice, sharp, crisp, machined end links. And when we see how nice and sharp and crisp the edges of the lugs of the case are, and then we look at this edge here on the end link not being as nice and sharp and crisp, it's sort of a, a, a little bit of a letdown there. The rest of the bracelet, though, the, the links are nice, no problem there. The clasp, just like the Steinhardt, is a letdown in that it's just friction locked with a fold over safety latch. And we have uh, micro adjusts. There is, of course, a dive extension, and I hate dive extensions. I think 99% of us have no use for a dive extension, but, uh, but yeah. Overall, the clasp is a little bit of a letdown. I'd like to see something a little bit nicer, a little bit better. But again, all of, almost all of the watches have the same style clasp. Next up, we have the Devosa Ternos Pro. Very nice watch, and uh, 
start to move up in the pricing categories as well here. One of the two more kind of quote unquote higher end watches. This Devosa comes in at $849. This is their Turnos Pro. It's a 500 meter diver. All of the other watches that we've looked at have been two and 300 meters. Uh, this is a 500 meter diver. It's a bigger watch. It's 42 millimeters in case diameter, 22 millimeter lugs, 15.5 millimeters thick, and a lug to lug of 50. You can also see there's a helium escape valve on the side of the case. They do have a 40 millimeter that would probably have been a better comparison to the other watches that we're talking about. That 40 millimeter is a 200 meter watch and uh, it's $769 as opposed to $849 on this one. But, uh, you know, Devosa sent me this one and it's fine. I think it's still a very good analog for the Rolex Submariner homage shootout that in comparison video that we're doing here. No Cyclops over the date on this watch. That's going to be a plus for a lot of people. Uh, I like the Cyclops myself, but the crystal on this watch is awesome. It has the best AR coating. You can see there's that little bit of a blue tint on it as we shine it towards the lights. Overall, this is the best crystal of all of the watches that we've looked at. The rest of the specs about this watch, this uses the what they call DAV3021 movement. I don't know if that's a Salita SW200 or an ETA2824-2. I couldn't find out. It's one or the other, though. Either way, it's fine. I have no problems with either of the, those movements. The sapphire crystal, which I mentioned, is outstanding and air coated very well. Ceramic insert on the bezel. Uh, the bezel itself, the action is excellent. Probably the best action of all of the watches that we've looked at thus far. The texture on the edges is very good as well. Overall, we're really starting to escalate up in terms of quality, and you can really feel it here on this watch. The case on this watch, just like the Squale, very nicely done, very sharp, crisp etches. The finishing is a step above all of the four and five hundred dollar watches. The end links, just like on the Squale, could be a little bit better because it's so crisp on the case edges, and then the edges of these end links are not quite as nicely done. But I think the fit to the case is nicer, recessed and inserted into the case lugs ever so slightly. The bracelet itself, also very nice, with the exception of, uh, you know, I just wish we had a better clasp. It's the same sort of thing. Safety, fold over safety latch with friction lock. Um, we have a dive extension and some micro adjusts. It's not a bad clasp, just like all the other ones. It's functional and it works. I just wish at, you know, 850 bucks we'd start to see more of a glide lock style adjustable clasp. But not too many complaints here with this watch. I think it is very, very nice. The last watch to take a look at here is, of course, the Genot Ocean Rover. The Genot Ocean Rover is by far the most expensive of all of the watches that we've looked at. Their retail price on their website, $14.99. There's usually a 20% discount, though, so you could pick this up for, say, $1,200. Still significantly more even than the Devosa before it, which came in at $849. Is it worth all of that extra money? I guess, you know, it's up to the end user. It's up to you. I think that it does a lot of things really well, more so than any of the, any of the other watches, but it is, yeah, it's expensive without a doubt. Basic information about this watch, 40 millimeters in case diameter, 20 millimeter lugs, 13 millimeters in thickness, and uh, 48 millimeters from tip to tip, or the watch's wingspan. We do have the caliber 7275 movement, which is a movement that Genome makes themselves, it is a 2824 ETA clone, but they build almost all of it themselves, uh, with the exception of a few pieces like the hairspring and the synthetic jewels. So that's pretty cool. It is highly regulated. They send you with the watch uh, a little certificate showing that they have tested it over the course of six weeks. I'm not sure that any of the other watches regulate it to that degree. I really appreciate that, and this is an accurate watch. Again, this is my watch, as I had mentioned earlier, and I've worn it a bit, and yeah, it keeps excellent time. Sapphire crystal, aluminum bezel insert as opposed to ceramic, 300 meter water resist, and this is an ISO 6425 dive watch for anyone that cares about that. As I had mentioned, once we got up to more ex some of the more expensive watches, the case, uh, the overall quality of the case started getting better and better, and this one is by far the best. The edges are nice and crisp. There's a very nice little chamfered edge. The finishing is outstanding on this watch. Even the end links are very nicely machined and match up with the edges of the case. The end link itself is recessed into the lug, so there's a little bit of a gap there, just like a real Rolex would have. Overall, 
the overall fit and finish of this watch is much better than all of the others. You would certainly expect that considering the price point. Some people are going to have a problem with the fact that this is an aluminum bezel. Well, this is a homage to an older style Submariner, mill sub style, so it should have an aluminum bezel insert anyway. Uh, no problem for me there. I don't think that the ceramic is really that important. The bezel itself, excellent action, really, really nicely done. I, uh, I think it's probably one of the best. This one also has the best bracelet. Aside from the end links, which we already touched on, the links themselves are very well done. The clasp is also very well done. Fold over safety latch, the hinged portion of the clasp, just like the Rolex. Very similar in look to the clasp on the Tissell, but much more nicely put together, much more refined. Also, the glide lock portion of the clasp just works better. It is a little bit uh, um, scratchy, I guess is how I might describe it, when you're adjusting it, but re-engaging it is perfectly uh, doable. Whereas on that uh, Tissell or Tissel, like I almost couldn't re-engage the lockup of the glide lock. This could just be a little bit smoother in terms of the actual sliding, but I bet it is, as if you worked it in over time, it would get probably better. Overall, yeah, the clasp is very, very nice. It is the best clasp. It is the best bracelet. It is the best overall fit and finish of all of the watches that we have looked at. Well, that is my comparison of six different Rolex Mariner homages. Uh, everything here I, I do like, with the exception of the Tissel or Tissel Marine Diver, uh, just letting me down in a couple of small regards. I think for the $270 price point, it's a pretty good watch. But yeah, just a couple of uh, little negatives, some minor issues with the movement on my time grapher. Uh, hand winding that watch as well was just kind of gritty. And uh, yeah, that was a little bit of a, of a letdown. It just doesn't feel smooth or refined like all of the other watches, including the very affordable Invicta. Hand winding this movement just doesn't feel awesome either. Uh, couple up that stuff with the uh, potential problems with the bracelet and more specifically the glide lock clasp that it comes with, and the fact that this is uh, not the first time that I've heard about problems with that clasp. Uh, yeah, that was the only one that kind of let me down. I think if it uh, didn't have problems with the movement. If the clasp worked a little bit better, I would like it just as much as all of the others. Of course, the Invicta is a great little entry-level watch, and yeah, if it breaks like uh, like it did for my friend that uh, I, I gifted the one watch to, replacing it for 50 bucks a year is no big deal. The Steinhardt is the the enthusiast's darling. You know, the, at, at the $400 price point, you get a pretty good bang for your buck. It is a little bit more distinct in the case shape. It's not exactly like a oyster case. Um, a very nice watch though. Very run of the run of the mill, middle of the road, and uh, that's exactly what I would expect. That's when we start escalating up in price. The the, the real dark horse is the Squale at only five seventy nine. I feel like you're getting a lot more refinement, a very, very much more a nicer fit and finish than the other more affordable watches. And it's not a huge price jump from four to 579. The Devosa is outstanding, but it does escalate up in price. The Crystal, fan, fantastic Crystal, great AR coating, uh, a little bit bigger, but there is the smaller version available as well. And then the Genoa is just outstanding, but it is very, very expensive. So. There you have it guys, stick with me for a few more minutes. I'm gonna jump back over to the studio view and close this off with some of my final thoughts. All right guys, there you have it. That is my comparison of the six Rolex Mariner homage watches. And uh, yeah, it was a really difficult video to put together if I'm being per perfectly honest. Coordinating and getting all of these watches in was certainly no small feat. And trying to do a video that wasn't gonna be two hours long and 
comparing watch A with watch B, watch A with watch C, watch A with watch D, and then watch B with watch C, and then watch, you know what I mean? Just back and forth like that. I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to give some basic information, show them all to you, kind of do a very lightweight comparison. I think I've accomplished that. I think you should have plenty of information about each and every one of these watches. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it. I appreciate you tuning in and checking it out. As always, if you'd like to help support the channel, there's a number of ways you can do that. They are found down in the description of this and every video I do. Number one, follow me on my social media accounts, be it Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. That would be greatly appreciated. Number two, you could help support me and this channel on Patreon. Big thanks to the guys that have been supporting me on Patreon, but I could always use a little bit more help. Finally, if you'd like to support me by using my Amazon affiliate link, that would be outstanding as well. If you like anything that I've reviewed and you want to buy it, just click my Amazon link first before you do your shopping. It doesn't matter if you buy something that I've reviewed or anything else for that matter, I get a small commission and those commissions do add up. Big thanks to everyone that has been using that Amazon affiliate link. I really, really do appreciate it. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. So until the next one, bye now.